going live anyways. I am now streaming live on Facebook, it says. I am now streaming live on Facebook. Is it true Facebook? Can I get live or what? I don't know. Let's check and see if we get one live on Facebook yet. I got my guest here and I'm going to the panelists. It does look like I'm live on Facebook. So, what's up again, Facebook? Hope you're not getting sick of seeing me today. Howard, I can't see you, buddy, so I'm not sure if you're there or not. Are you able to turn your video on or not? I can't hear you. Can't see you, buddy. Well, I still can't hear you. Now I can see you. Okay, I'm here. I'm here now. Awesome, man. How you doing? Sorry I'm late. Um, no problem at all. No problem. I love your hat. Uh, now I'm not hearing you now. You went. You went mute for a moment here. Yeah, I just had to. Yeah, everything. Now, started. now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. So how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Doing very good. Everything's uh, moving along nicely. I'm pleased. Well, that's that's great. Well, first, I just want to thank you for, for taking the time to, to be on my show with me. And then I just wanted to kind of go over the, the rules and regulations of my interview and make sure you're cool with everything and then we'll proceed, all right? Sure, absolutely. That sounds good. So I don't fucking believe in rules and regulations. I curse. Uh, so hopefully you're cool with that. And basically, the style of my interview is I just ask you some random questions and I try to... Sure entertaining questions and stuff that typically people won't talk about if you have if you don't want to answer the question you can just tell me to move on and we can move on uh, after i ask you those questions then i give you a chance to give whatever value that you think you can provide to the audience so that they absolutely stuff and then right after absolutely. that I've, I've done a lot of john i've done a lot of interviews a lot of podcasts so um i'm pretty old hat at this and i'm good at it so no worries I, I, I flow pretty easily with the energy and I love um, interviews that are playful and fun and entertaining. And uh, I get into that energy really, really well. And I love that. So, so all is good. And uh, I, I completed your doc, you know, your doc with your items in it. So you probably have that by now. I, I do. I'm looking at it right now. And just to just to let you know, I'm very open and transparent on everything I do. And I'm doing these interviews to basically uh, make money and teach people how they can leverage things like this, like just interviewing people. Yeah, to... yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's fantastic. I love it. So we've never met before, but I reached out to you because you're on a virtual summit where I'm on that virtual summit with you with uh, with Martin, Martin, Mar Martin Bodecker. Yeah. So could you tell me a little bit of your of your story, like of your personal story, like who you are? Absolutely. I love to love to. Yeah. I started out many years ago, um, John, in the field of mathematics. I got my bachelor's and master's degree. Uh, and I um, was pursuing that field for a, a number of years, teaching uh, high school and also college courses. My original goal was to finish my PhD and teach at the college level as a professor. And that um, did not pan out. Uh, the universe of spirit, whatever you want to call it, had a bit of a different plan had a different plan for me, which was very, very cool. And so I made a detour and I started to get involved in some way out stuff, uh, studying astrology and metaphysics. And then that set me on a whole new path of spiritual uh, growth and personal growth. And then a few years after that, I founded my program which I am now doing 39, essentially 39 years later, I'm still doing the same program, although it's obviously evolved profoundly since then. But the essence of the program is still the same. And so it's called Life Crafting. I think you saw that in the notes there. It's called Life Crafting and, and it's extraordinary and it brings me immense joy every day that I do it. So. We can get into the details of that or where whatever place you'd like to go, but we're you know uh, very well, fluid. I'm really curious what I mean, what is life crafting and what what is 
So well, life crafting, it. yeah, um, life crafting is a program. It's a, it's a personal and business development course or program with a clear uh, curriculum or process, you could say. And it has a very defined, it has a defined outcome, which I can share. And then it also has a target population that's ideally suited for that, for the program. So I'll start out by telling you the, the typical outcome. Okay. And then, and then we can talk about who it's, who it's it suited for. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I gotta just be honest. I'm totally fucking confused on what it actually is. So. Oh, sorry. You're okay. Then where we are, right? Yeah. Like I said, I still not understanding what it is. So. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to keep the secret. I'm going to tell you everything. So uh, life crafting is a process uh, where we go systematically step by step. First thing is to help people clarify their life purpose, their overarching sense of direction and passion and their unique genius. Like what is the, their gifts? What are their unique gifts? And then what we do is we combine, we combine their, their purpose and their unique genius into a path and, and then launch, help them to launch an ideal business based on that where they make money doing what they love. So life crafting, as I said before, has a curriculum, a step-by-step -step process. They're guided through those steps. The steps are not simply business oriented or professionally oriented. They have a very strong component internal, which is a spiritual, emotional, um, psychological type of inner growth work that is done in parallel with the strategic, professional, and business oriented program. So they both kind of run in parallel each other. Okay. And with me so far? Um, so, so far, I think so. I think what you said is basically why. Yeah, if you have any, if you have any questions, uh, John, John, or you want me to go uh, to dig deeper or to go down into any more specifics, I can do, I can give you whatever level of detail you'd like. I'm sort of giving you sort of the overview first, and then we can delve into whatever area you like. One of the really unique aspects of life crafting is astrology. Uh, I've been a master astrologer for decades, and I have um, developed a very unique integration between that dim dimension of, uh, of astrology and the whole life crafting program. So that means that they they run in parallel each other. They they go, you know, they're parallel and they integrate and they spill over in into each other. Okay. And if you're if you're you just tell me, I'd like to know more, can you just tell me what you mean by astrology? Yeah, I will tell I will tell you exactly. Yes, certainly. I will tell you exactly what that looks like. Okay. Are you talking about horoscopes and stuff when you're talking no, about astrology? well not not horoscopes or stuff, but actual birth charts, exact birth charts that are drawn up for people's exact date of birth, time of birth, and location of birth on the planet. And so an exact birth chart, natal birth chart, is a, essentially a symbolic blueprint of their life, um, spiritually and in, on all levels, uh, if you want to think of it as kind of a snapshot of a moment in time, like a capturing a moment in time of their birth, which then reveals all this amazing information about them. If it's something that you're unfamiliar with, or you've never heard of that, or you don't know that such a thing is actually possible, well, then, then I can assure you that it is, and it's possible and attainable and achievable. And I'm what assuming that you believe, believe in all that mumbo jumbo. I'm assuming that you believe like that part of my personality. Okay, let me, let me turn it around, John. Let me, John. Can it, let me turn it around to you for a quick moment. Do you believe in refrigerators, or do you use refrigerators to keep your food cold? <laughs> Which would you say is true? I think you use a refrigerator to keep your food cold. I don't think that you have any particular belief in refrigerators. 
I think you use refrigerators because they're a tool, they're useful to you. And so for me, astrology is a tool, just like it is a refrigerator is. It's something that I've been using for decades, which has incredible precision and accuracy and depth and depth of meaning and profound insight into all aspects of life, all aspects of human existence at any level that you would want to go into. However, if it's unfamiliar to you, you know, in other words, if this is just very foreign out there, kind of sounds like hocus pocus or whatever, then it won't have any meaning. None of this will have any meaning. And the only way it can have meaning is through direct experience because you can't be given information in the mind that's going to suddenly allow you to sort of get, like to truly get the, the reality of what I'm speaking about. It's only gained through experience, through actual experience is how people recognize, the, recognize what I'm talking about. Scientific data will not do very much. I could pile on a hundred volumes of scientific data that will not do anything for you. The only thing that will be of value is experience. You know, the, the learning from experience principle of life. You can go learn from textbooks, from college professors, but ultimately it's life experience that teaches you what's real and what's trustworthy and how to use it in a practical down-to-earth sort of way. Hopefully so that's helpful. Yeah? I don't want you to take offense to this, but I'm just- I don't take any offense. Well, that's I don't take any offense. Yeah, some people are not ready for astrology. Some people, it's not, it's not in on their path, or it's not, it's not. Uh, they're not ready for this level. It's, it's not for the, it's not for the average, uh, you know, whatever average person. It's, it's not who I, who I work with. I don't work with very, you know, middle of the road average people who just. You know, do their average kind of everyday stuff. You know, it's not it's not who I who I work with. So how old with are you? Who, how old am I? I'm 97. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just just playing around. Uh, why do you ask my age? I'm just curious. Because I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just trying to direct the conversation somewhere else. I'm just curious. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, how old do I look to you? <laughs> um, I would say in your somewhere in your fifties. Fifties, fifties, like fifty-six, fifty-eight, maybe or something. Probably, yeah. Uh, I, I don't really know. But well, that's a that's a good guess. I mean, that's what most people guess. I would say I'm actually seventy-two. Wow. So when when yeah. you start, what's are you Cancer, Gemini? No, I'm a Taurus. So are you stubborn and hard-headed, like? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually very um, flexible in the areas that, in which I want to be, and very determined in the areas where I want to be. So stubbornness is a judgmental word that's used for Taurus when people want them to change or be different. But to the Taurus, they're just determined and they're very focused and very clear on what's important to them. So it's all a matter of perspective, like who's doing the looking, you know, who's, who's doing, you know, you, you've heard that expression, beauty is in the eye of, of the beholder, right? And so the same is true for other things like judgments. We have judgments about others and we put labels on things, but those are also in the eye of the beholder very much. So back in the seventies, you were in your twenties, right? In the seventies? Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I, I, basically, yes, yes, that's true. Did you participate in all the, all the drugs scene back then? No, uh, no, I didn't, actually, I didn't. You know, I was, you know, did some marijuana here and there at a party or, you know, little odds and ends, but I never got deep into the drug thing. I never got into any psychedelics or any, uh, yeah, and no psychedelics and no, no hard stuff, no hard drugs at all. It never really was attracted to that. like you're like a spiritual person, like you believe in, in spirits and like you're a very spiritual person, you strike me as. 
No, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a spiritually oriented person. Um, let me also interject here that I think would help a great deal to your viewing audience. I'm an award-winning author of a book called Craft Your Genius Life. The subtitle is Move Beyond Limiting Beliefs to Fulfill Your Destiny. The book is available on Amazon, uh, but it's also available on my own uh, special uh, page, which has the added advantage people can get the PDF downloadable version of the book uh, for a much reduced cost. And then when they do that, they can join our special bonus membership. And I think that the book um, captures not only my history, my entire story, but it teaches all the progressive sequence of steps, principles, ide ideology, et cetera, that people need to know to make their progression of steps to uh, accomplish whatever their most important goals are in life. So I think the book is a great starting point for people who want to really understand what life crafting and what this book is really about. And one in interesting uh, point I'll mention is that the book contains a very extensive chapter, not only on astrology, but on the history, on the actual history, um, uh, which clarifies some of the key things that happened in the Middle Ages uh, with the church, with the Catholic church, and how the whole uh, area was um, skewed and distorted and uh, uh, anyway anybody who wants to understand the real true history can read about that in the book just a little an added anecdote i just want you to know that i'm looking at you over here and i've got a streaming live on facebook over here so if you see nice. you see I love it. There, I love it. great fantastic i love it i just want you to know i'm still paying attention when i'm looking over here all right uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all good. It's all good. I love every. I love all of it. It's all fantastic. So, is there an audio version of your book for this lazy millennial? There isn't. Book? There, there isn't an audio version, and it's a very, actually, a very good point that I think I will need to create an audio version at some point soon. I think that is important to have. So, thank you very much for a asking about that. So, it's like little reminder to me. So let's get back to this life crafting a little bit. Help me understand. Yeah, sure. From what I understand so far, it's basically you're trying to help people find their unique purpose in this fucked up reality and how to how to find what their unique purpose is and essentially monetize that for a business. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. The only single word I would change in what you just said is trying. <laughs> I would not I would not say trying. I would say doing, <laughs> say doing rather than trying. But yes, your your description is pretty accurate. Yes. Are you married? Uh, no, no, I'm single now. You're, have you ever been married? Have kids or anything like that? I was married some time ago. Yes, what way back I was married in the past. Just had several uh, long-term meaningful relationships in my life. And now I'm single and dating, so... So you're dating on the market? Are you using some type of some type of app like Tinder or something like that? No, oh no, 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 not using no, not using uh, not using those apps really very much. I mean, mostly just meeting people in in or live, real, you know, real to life situations, that sort of thing. Yeah, just real, oh. real life, real to life situations. That's so much. That's too much online. You said you said you're in your seventies. I'm really curious on like how a seventy year old starts a date and like what do you guys do? Like, because I'm assuming that your end goal in the date is it's sex. Well, it's it's nice. actually it's a, it's actually pretty pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> think about it for a moment. There's a lot of women in their in their fifties, uh, a lot of attractive and. Uh, and, and, and interesting, dynamic women in their 50s and, and, and early to mid 60s that are uh, just a, a joy, just a real joy to be with. And they're, uh, they have not only the, the, the depth of, of wisdom that comes from, from you know, being around a while, they have an open heart, they have a greater spiritual development, they're more patient, they're more interested in deep connection rather than sort of 
the frivolous, you know, aspects of life that people tend to be in when they're younger. So there's uh, the beautiful opportunity to have deeper, deeper, meaningful connections with with women. Uh, and there's still plenty of opportunity for juicy, uh, sensual, sexual fulfillment. But all the things that tend to go with all that, all the beautiful uh, qualities and things that tend to go with that, that are often not present uh, in, in earlier years. So do you, do you have do you have children? I think I asked. I don't. You. I don't have children. No. So I'm going to ask you. A, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and like I said, you don't have to answer them if you. No, ask them. You can uh, ask anything you like if it. If it doesn't feel appropriate or, or relevant, I'll, I'll certainly share. I'll certainly tell you that. Well, it's probably not going to be appropriate or relevant, but I'm going to tell you why I'm asking you. And the reason I'm asking you is because my dad was kind of a fucking bastard. And he still is a bastard. And, you know, he wasn't really a father to me. So I, I don't really have like a person that I ask that's older than me. And I'm just curious. Like, yeah. Uh, like, so how old were you whenever you stopped, like, Oh, well, I guess I should ask you first, do you have a sex drive? Like, do you feel like masturbating and having sex all the time? Like, do you still have that? As, like, I have, you- yeah. Yes, uh, it's interesting because I, 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 it's a good question because, um, you know, I think it will vary. I, I, I think it will vary uh, 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 to what an extent from one person to the next. But I am blessed. I am blessed that I have a, a good sex drive and I'm, you know, just active and, you know, whatever, just as, you know, as years, years earlier, you know, that's obviously not going to be the case for, um, you know, everyone my age, but certainly for me, you know, I, I'm blessed in that regard. So I'm, I'm happy about that. So it's, it's possible that once I, once I hit 70, I'll still feel like having sex with my mom. Absolutely, right. absolutely, absolutely, John. You, you know, you don't need to buy, it's funny, you don't need to buy into any of the, of the beliefs that, the limiting beliefs that have been fostered on you or others about what you can't be or you can't do or you can't have or this age is only for that and that age is only for this and you know, you're, you're over the hill once you're 40. I mean, all these things are just beliefs that are fostered on the public and the through media and through various different channels. And people believe that crap. And that's one of the reasons why they are limited in life, because they, they buy into limiting beliefs. And that's exactly the reason why people, what people get from my book and from my work is to learn how not to do that. To learn how to go beyond uh, these beliefs, these limiting beliefs, and choose their own beliefs, what they want to believe. Amazing. Pretty do amazing. Have, do you have some daily routine? Because you don't look like you're seven. Do you have some daily routine that you follow to, to stay? Yes, I do. And stuff? Yes, I do. I do have a routine. Um, absolutely. I do ever do I do I do a number of things. I do juicing. Uh, you know, uh, you've heard of juicing. Yeah. Well, juicing vegetables and fruits with a juicer. Never heard of juicing. Juicing people equate organic, natural juice from from fresh vegetables and fruits, and they have a, a device called a juicer where they make juice and they drink it. You never heard of that? No, I mean, not. I haven't heard of it. But okay, okay. Just, well, it's it's it been around. Good. Okay, it's it's simple. It's been around for a very long time. It's been around for several decades, um, but uh, it's and it's one of the most powerful health-related things a person can do for their body, for their body, for their mind, for their mind, for their whole being. So, so juicing is one of the things I do. I also have an incredible uh, uh, circle of friends, of loving, caring friends that are amazingly supportive of me, which is a very important part of, in life of having really close and deep friendships uh, where you can share things and learn and grow from each other. Uh, and so, and then I have other various other kinds of, you know, health practices, but I would say state of mind, state of mind is a big factor and also creativity, uh, staying in my own creative energies and being in a state of joy from doing what I love is a big factor in wellness and well-being. 
that also keeps you young, keeps you young in body, mind, and spirit. Those are just a few things. So you spend time with your friends every day? You hang out with your friends every day? Uh, not every day. Uh, well, not necessarily every day. Some days are the days. I mean, we're connected all the time. Uh, it varies. It varies. It's just the presence of connection, that presence of knowing that people are there and you're in their life and they're they're in your life and you can connect whenever you want to. And they're there for you when you go through a challenge or you're available to them and, and there's that bond. That's that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Where, where do you live at? I live in north I live in Northern California, about thirty to forty minutes north of San Francisco. Is that where you were born at? No, I was born in New York City. So I think there is this perception that us young people have that that you know people in their seventies are just when you hang out with your friends, you're sitting around playing like fucking shuffle or something. What what types of stuff do you and your friends do together? We do, we do a lot of the same things other people do. It isn't, I mean, one of the things <laughs> I think, I think it's very important for you to do is to break out of stereotypes. Okay. Cause I think you might have some, I mean, I get the impression you might have some stereotypes and be good to kind of get rid of those. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we do the same kind of things. We hang out, we, we listen to music, we go to, we party, we have dinners, we, whatever, you know, we, I, I watch uh, sporting events, I go out uh, for walks, bike rides, um, whatever, go to concerts, um, have fun, do whatever, do whatever, do work on the internet, create magical programs for people that are transformational, uh, do astrology, do it, all, everything, all of it, all of it, go to wonderful restaurants, have good dinners, I mean, you name it, we do it all. There's no limit. So you said your educational background is in math, right? Like how it original be originally it was in mathematics. Originally. But uh, that, as I said to you, it, it progressed very far beyond uh, it progressed very far beyond that. That was my early education. Right. So like did you get into super advanced mathematics, like real advanced mathematics? I I earned my master I earned my master's degree in pure mathematics at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And I taught high school and college mathematics for several years. Okay, I think I explained that before, but no problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was a mathematician, a bona fide teacher and teacher and mathematician, yes, years ago, yes. So it, it would be safe for me to say that you're a smart person, right? I think it would be. I think it would be. I think it would be very safe to say that I'm a smart person, but my, but my uh, smartness, if you call it, uh, extended beyond the purely intellectual realm, uh, and that's the important thing I want your viewers to understand about me, is that smart is not just measured by your brain, you know, by your intellect and by your brain. That real smartness is, is your awareness, your consciousness, your your all the different levels of your being are part of your smartness, not just not just intellect, not just pure intellect. Uh, have you ever heard of some? Hold on, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of something called emotional intelligence? Uh, not really, no. Okay, good. Do you think that people have varying different levels of skill? of skill and mastery in their life and how they deal with their feelings and how they're able to deal with and communicate their feelings or not able to at all? For, for sure. Do you, think, do you think that there are people who get very easily triggered by emotional reactions and are therefore limited in life of what they can be or do because of that? This is, this is the domain in which I work beyond the, the accomplishment of goals and the accomplishment of business and money, this is the domain I work in. I help people achieve an inner mastery, an internal mastery with themselves, not only the mind and not only money and not only business, but the total mastery of the being, of the whole being. That's what we do in life crafting. Very different. So I'm, I'm really curious about all this. I really like the fact that you have a, a background in math because 
it gives yeah. it, to me it gives you so much credibility because everything yes exactly I, I understand that yeah I, I understand that and, and you seem spiritual do you believe that there is a do you believe that there is a collective consciousness already do you believe that as humans are are we used to be so much smarter and we used to be able to to connect with each other through a collective well let me uh let me let me let me just like uh, i i would say the answer is yes to your question the, the answer is yes uh however i would just qualify it very very slightly rather than saying i believe that there is a universal consciousness i would say that i know that there is a universal consciousness. I know it from experience, from experience. I've experienced the connection with the universe, the connection with spirit, the connection with the divine. I've experienced the direct connection to it. That is very, very, very different from believing in it as a concept in the mind, very different. So that's one thing I want to get through to your viewers that we're talking about direct experience and knowing, not having a thought in your mind, oh, I believe in refrigerators, I like them, kind of thing. All right? I'm being a little bit facetious. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, it's, uh, if you were to know me, it's totally fine. I'm, I'm really curious, could you tell me more about this experience that you had with collective consciousness? I can get, I can share I can share uh, many things to give you examples of that. Let me uh, let me share a couple. Okay, I had an experience several years back where where I had uh, a, a truly empty mind for a for a full hour. In other words, I had for one full hour I had no thoughts in my mind, no thoughts, zero thought. I was aware, awake. I was connected to my environment. I was experiencing, directly experiencing my world around me and in me, but no thought, no thought about it, no thought. Very few people ever get to that point where they can do that kind of thing. That's one example, okay? Another example I can share with you is that I've had numerous, numerous experiences of, of receiving guidance to uh, particular questions or problems that I had in my life or just areas of inquiry that I wanted to understand better and had a means of receiving immediate, direct, and super accurate answers to my personal questions or my personal inquiry. So this is another way of, of describing direct experience, direct connection. Okay, so that you know, uh, look, let, let me give you some, an analogy here that I think maybe you, you could relate to. You've heard of the stories of people who have so-called near-death experiences where they, they die on the operating table, they're declared dead, and then they see their body from above where they're looking down on their body, that kind of thing. You probably heard you know, weird stories like that, okay? And, and then they come back and they have a different they come back to life again and then they have a different set of values and other things are important different things are important to them than used to be before you know that you probably have some vague sense of that okay well i'm going to tell you that you don't have to go through a near death experience in order to acquire that kind of knowing and that kind of connection it is not necessary to leave her body and to be declared dead by doctors in order to have that many people can have that and you can learn to directly interact with spirit and get guidance whenever you want to in a two-way line of communication those things can be learned but it's a skill it's an actual skill just like any other skill you have to study it and learn it and practice it to get good at it so your viewers, when they watch this, they go, holy cow, I want to learn how to do that. Great, get in touch with me, and then I can help you learn how to do that. It's all learnable. These are things are learnable. And this, is, this is actually why I asked you before if you got into the drug scene earlier, because what actually happens whenever these people have these near-death experiences is your body, your penal gland, releases a, a surge of EMT. And, you know, right. EMT is a, it's like a, it's 
like a neurotransmitter. So, uh, so I thought just because you were spiritual, you may enjoy trying to, to get into these into these other into these other conscious realms. Yeah, yeah. There exactly. There, there. Truth is, there are many pathways to achieving these kind of things. There's not. It's not one. You know, it's not one way. It's not one. Uh, one path. It's it's multiple paths. There are multiple methods of, of of achieving this. If you can get there. But okay? I'm curious to know to to know your opinion. On how how do you think we got here as human species? Like, how do you think we were able to be here? Like, do you think some God created us, or some evolution process happened? Well, the 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 first thing I want to say about God is that uh, I don't have a conventional. Uh, I don't have a conventional view of God. I believe that all uh, things in the entire universe are are infused with uh, an infinite intelligence, and that that infinite intelligence is is Im imbued in every single uh, molecule and every single atom and every single thing that exists. Okay, and, and that one of the uh, intentions, you could say, of that infinite intelligence is the continued evolution. Of all living, of all living things, to bring them to higher and higher states, evolutionary states. So, if at some point there were, uh, you know, like like the Darwin theory of like, okay, there were certain or um, one-celled organisms, and then they sort of develop more complex organisms, and eventually those evolved through you know millions of years and got out onto the land. So there were there were those kinds of forces operating that that I think caused life on planet Earth to evolve millions of years ago. But then there were the other and interesting interesting phenomenon like visitors, like you know ET ET visitors that interacted with those earlier you know those earlier life forms and did some uh, forms of of a genetic. And of genetic engineering to, to further evolve to accelerate the evolution, if, if you will, to accelerate the evolution. That's that's my view of how we how we developed here on this planet. But there were many civilizations going back way prior to the re, to our official recorded history that we have. There were a number of civilizations that lived on this planet way before that. So uh, I'm assuming that you do believe in aliens, that there are other living organisms. I believe that the entire universe, I believe that the entire universe is brimming, is brimming with life in, in, in so many forms and so many types that would defy the mind, the mind's comprehension of all the different types of life in the universe. So that answers your question, I think, directly. So what do you, what do you think our purpose is? I know this kind of ties into this kind of what do I well, let's say it again a little louder, please. No, so this kind of ties into I think live crafting, but what would you say our purpose is? Like humanity's purpose. What do you think our purpose is that we should be doing? Our, our purpose, our, our purpose, uh, we have a purpose individually, but also collectively. Uh, I think our, our purpose individually is to ev evolve on our own unique path. Every individual has a unique spiritual journey, a unique spiritual path. And that's where astrology comes in again, because you can actually understand that unique, that unique journey uh, through that. And then collectively, we are also evolving and learning as a species as a whole, uh, mostly how to, uh, again, ev it's evolutionary, how to embrace love, embrace love, creativity, and joy, and and all the various darker, darker, more primitive aspects of human nature, learning how to evolve and grow beyond the, the more primitive and more destructive aspects of human nature, which are intrinsic to our, our species, but uh, but eventually grow out of the need for those darker forces and not really need them anymore. So just like like children grow and they they uh, outgrow certain toys, they have certain toys at a certain age, then they outgrow those toys and they get new they get new toys, and then they outgrow those toys and get bigger 
you know, different toys, right? So the same manner, we as a species are uh, evolving past certain practices and certain kinds of things that are harmful to us or each other, and we're growing beyond that. That's my answer. So you mentioned that we had an individual purpose and in in a collective purpose. So right, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, you must understand how smart of an of a organism that we could be, right? Um, like yes. As humans, we can do so much. Stuff. Yes, I can see. I see many people who have a profound uh, po po potential uh, and only realize a, realize a small portion of it. Yes, I see that all the time. So how do you feel... How do you feel about society as it is today? You know, we have people out there that are that are literally learning human psychology so that they can sell shit to people that they don't actually need. How do you how do you feel that we're going in society today? How do I how do I feel about what again? Please say 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 again. How do you quite feel that we're going as a whole in our society. So like you have very smart people out there that are learning psychology so that they can sell stuff to people that they actually don't need. So how do you feel like we're actually going as a society? Everybody in our society is, is growing in their own unique and perfect way. Nobody is making a mistake or doing it wrong because every person is doing their best to evolve within the framework of their capabilities, within the framework of their beliefs, within the framework of their environment, and they're all progressing on their individual path. As they learn and grow, then they bring people into their life that are more reflective of the level at which they are and what they're ready for. So when you're ready for something new, you tend to attract a new person that is more uh, consistent and harmonious with what you're learning and what you're doing. So no one's doing anything wrong. There may be doing horrendous things in the world, but it's still part of their own learning and growth, learning and growth process. So that's my view on that. And then collectively, we're also learning together, which means that as we each learn individually, we're able to combine forces together and collaborate and be more effective uh, in, in, in community or in relationship or in community with each other. So our communities are also evolving to higher to higher levels than we than, we, than they have been. That so, answer. So let me tell you about my passion and my ultimate goal in life, and then I want to get your perspective on. It. Sure, of course. Right. So of my, course. my end goal in life, the, my number one dream is to essentially create conscious tech. All right, to to create an interface between humans so that we can become ultimately connected. You know, like our thoughts, our consciousness can like create a collective consciousness, create a, a unified model of humanity, right? So that we right. can essentially feel each other's emotions and we can connect each, to each other at the core and we can instantly share information. How, how do you feel about that? Would you be down for that or do you think that's... No, I, 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 I love that. I love that. And, and I'm going to say something that may startle you. Uh, and that is that what you're describing already exists. And it already exists. And the way to, it's more a matter of, it's more a matter of accessing it and having the skill set and the consciousness awareness to access what you just described than it is a matter of creating something new. Because I don't believe that we necessarily need something new. We could have something new, but I think that we have a lot of the components already that you are uh, that that you're describing that you want it's more a matter of learning how to access it, it, can i use an analogy for a moment please do so let's say you have you have a computer and it has a hard drive right sure and what if you had a file on your hard drive and you didn't know where the file was it was uh, it was stored somewhere but you couldn't find it and then it was also encrypted so that even if you did find it, you wouldn't be able to open it because the encryption would block opening it. And what if then after you broke that encryption and you were able to open it, you still couldn't read the contents of the file because there'd be another level of encryption in the data in the file 
so you couldn't read what was in it. Okay, so that would be a tough. That would be tough. That would be tough to get to that, right? What I just described is where most people are in their awareness. They're they're disconnected from the source, from the actual source of what they the information or data that they really want to connect to. It's right in front of them, but they're disconnected and unable to access it. Okay, now. The, what's the answer? The answer is not to learn how to access it by doing another computer software program, you know, not, not necessarily in another intellectual, um, another intellectual thing, uh, or another a technology, so, you know, solution, <laughs> advanced, whatever, but it's more a matter of consciousness and heart, mind, spirit awakening. It's an awakening process of the being of the whole being and part of that awakening process is being able to make connection to others in ways that you don't normally do so and as you gain skill and ability to do that you achieve exactly the kind of connectivity that you were just describing a few minutes ago boom there you go that's, that's awesome. I'm going to put my glasses on for marketing purposes here. Uh, but what it sounds like you just said is the conscious, the collective consciousness already exists. And are you trying to tell me that I can fucking pay you money and you can teach me how to tap into that? Is that what you do? Is that part of what you do? Uh, well, yes. Uh, however, however, the however the paying me money part. Uh, is is uh, I think a little bit how shall I say it? it's a little bit uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for uh, I think it's a little bit deceptive I think it's a little deceptive and and diminishing and the reason I say that is because there there is a percentage of the people uh, who are watching your show who are watching your video who have a viewpoint that when something is commercialized, when something costs money, then somehow it's less, it's less than. It's only something, a product or a service, and if you have to pay for it, oh, well, it must be a scam. It must be some kind of, you know, uh, bogus, bogus scam because you're paying money for it. Well, why shouldn't it be completely available for free? Because anything that's spiritual in nature should really be just free. So there's a percentage of your audience who has that belief. Okay, I don't know who, but obviously some. So I'm going to tell you that you can learn what I'm describing without paying me money. You can learn if you have the discipline and you have willing to take the time and you're willing to gain them a level of mastery and give up your give up your uh, what's the word I'm looking for a uh, jaded uh, you're jaded, a jaded attitude, if you have a jaded attitude, and your cynicism. So if you could give up your cynicism and your jadedness, and open your heart and mind in a sincere way, then you could learn this without paying any money to anyone. You don't have to pay money to anyone, assuming you'd be willing to put the time and the time and effort in. You follow? Yeah, you could do it then. You don't need to pay, pay money for it. But this is something that you teach, right? This is something that you help people. It's part, it's part of what I teach. It's not the whole of what I teach. It's part of what I teach. Because what I teach is multi-dimensional and multi, it's multi-dimensional. There's many aspects to it. It's so not one-dimensional. One that you were talking about earlier? Yes. Part of, yes, part of life crafting, correct. Correct. You, you never made it to talk about pain. Who are Do I want to say again? I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you. What? I said you never made it to tell me who, who are the people that could use life crafting. So who, like, what types of people? I described, oh, let me, let me go back and explain that. The people I most, most uh, frequently work with are the individuals who are already successful in life, already successful in some field and some fields of work uh, frequently in the in the corporate world but not limited to that uh, and they are have reached a crossroads point in their life they're 
you know, they've reached a certain point that they're burned out, they're unhappy, they are, they're, you know, they're bored, uh, they're whatever it is. And whatever they've been doing is no longer a fit for them. So they feel a little bit like the, the square peg trying to fit into the round hole. They need a new direction in life, okay? And they come to me with that, with that notion that they can learn with that, with that desire to learn that, to learn a new path, to, to uh, define and create a new path, and to take all the years of experience that they have and then and apply you know, their past knowledge and experience to the new direction that they're going in. And that's what I do. I act as a guide, a guide mentor, guiding them to, to craft a new path for themselves. That's why we call it life crafting, because it is a work of art. It's a crafted work of art. That's why. So, so let's say I signed up for life crafting because I am a, a somewhat successful person, I might say. Um, what should I expect to get? Like, what type of results should I expect? What, what would be, let's say, the deliverable? Stuff? Well, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ultimate result that you would get if you see the process through is that you will, will wind up with a business that you love uh, doing something that you're gifted, you're gifted at, something you're truly gifted at, uh, and doing something you love and making good money, making good money doing it. And it would be an expression of your your deepest uh, your deepest values and your your core desires. So it will bring you joy. It brings you joy to do it because you are um, living, you're expressing your your deepest truth and your greatest your greatest ability. That's the outcome, the desired outcome of life crafting is a successful business making money doing what you love. What if I already have that? Like what if I already have a successful business doing what I love? Then you don't need then you don't need life crafting. Then you just just keep doing it. You don't need me. Nothing else I get away but there's nothing what what? I said there's nothing else I'll get from it. There are many other things you could gain from from working with me uh, and with our team. There are many other layers and levels and aspects uh, of, of what you could what you could gain working with us. Uh, so yes, there's certainly layers and and levels and areas and whatever. It all depends on what your goals are and what your needs are and what your challenges are. I, I like to begin with people with what they tell me they want. I don't super Im, Im, impose anything on them. Rather, I go with what they tell me that they're most seeking or wanting. And we begin really with that. The reason I ask is because like I said, I already have a, I already have a job that I, I love. I'm doing what I love. I'm doing what That's I love. Fantastic. You're all set then. So what is it you long for? What is it you, you want that you don't have? So honestly, it, Honestly, to understand the fucking reality, to understand this mechanism that I'm existing in and, and why I'm able to actually be here in the first place, how my consciousness actually emerges. Okay. Well, I mean, I think I think that's a very legitimate, uh, a, a legitimate pursuit. It's a very legitimate um, inquiry. Let's put it in that form of an inquiry. You f you're familiar with that word? An inquiry. An inquiry is an honest, uh, it's an honest inquiring to want to know, a sincere and honest uh, seeking or desire to want to know and understand. And if you were to come to me and you said that to me, and I sense that you were sincere in your desire for it, I would work with you with providing you with some steps, some various different uh, practices, some conscious, you know, conscious practices, spiritual practices, and various kinds of exercises, interactive tools. And then I would work with you to see the discoveries that you make. And then we'd work together in partnership on that for you to progress along that path. But I have to be sure that you're sincere. If I get that you're, like I said before, if you're a cynic or you're jaded or you're just being phony or any of that, I don't want any part of it. But if you come with an open heart and open mind and you're sincere, 
then yes, I can be your guide and I can help you make some powerful, some powerful discoveries and, and gain insights. So, so it seems like live crafting is perfect for people who want to, to be able to follow their passions and they're not doing that yet. They don't have their own business that they're really uh, 100% yes. happy with. But even if that's they exactly, have that already. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But it's also good for people who want deeper levels of understanding or deeper levels of mastery within themselves, deeper levels of uh, in, uh, the enjoyment of life and the appreciation and maybe work on relationships and communication skills. Uh, it, so there are many other levels that people can can utilize. So how does how does astrology fit into, into this whole thing? The way it works is that when people start out at the beginning, um, I do a, a private one to one session with them. That's based on their exact natal birth chart an exact natal birth chart is uh again it's it's a very precise mathematical thing where astrologers have software we put the data in the software we put in the date time and and city of birth into the software with lati longitude latitude etc the software does all the complex calculations and prints out a very elaborate beautiful uh uh pages with with exact data on it and exact positioning and configuration of their their birth chart and then with the skill that i have of, of uh, over 30 years experience understanding this i'm able to do uh an in-depth session with them where we go in into the all the different facets of their chart and pull out all the data we work interactively to validate, to validate the information from their chart, to understand themselves, then we understand what the life lessons are for them. Why are they here and what are the lessons are that they're learning? And how can they use their assets, their built-in assets, skills and talent and experience towards the goals and the, the vision and mission that they have? All that's available through the birth chart and then there's something called transits, where we map the movement of planets over time, over a year. We see exactly where the planets are going to be. And then that gives us a timing mechanism to understand the different periods of time and cycles that the person is going through. And all of that becomes overlaid on their life crafting program and curriculum, so they merge so everything merges together and synchronizes together in harmony and harmony together. That all the pieces work together and enhance each other and are what we call synergy. If you're familiar with that word, S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y, synergy, which is the magical combining together of disparate elements to produce a magical result that could never be predicted by the individual component parts never could never be predicted it's completely magical that's synergy that's what we do synergy do you believe in magic like a typical person would define magic do you believe that magic is real the two types there's two types of magic there's magic that some that simple trickery or, or sleight of hand that most magicians will you know showman magicians will use just where you know you don't know see exactly what they're doing that's just you know that's just trickery that's really just like we say sleight of hand then there's another type of magic the magic that is um the miraculous magic that's intrinsic to life itself when you are aligned with the universe as we've been talking the whole time that's a real that's a real magic that's a magic that does not require sleight of hand or any kind of deception whatsoever. It's real to the nature of life. It's built into the to the source, to the nature of life itself. And that requires the skills that we've been discussing and the, the openness and the skills that we've been discussing. So it sounds like it sounds like yes, that you, you do believe that there is both of those types of magic, right? 
Yeah, I, 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 well, I witness, I witness it. When you, again, we come back to this distinction I pointed out several times, uh, believing in something as a concept versus experiencing it directly. I don't, I don't advocate that people believe, uh, believe something in their mind and just think, you know, operate with that. I encourage, I encourage people to have direct experience, not just simply going by some sort of intellectual belief, which is kind of boring, actually, to be honest. Intellectual beliefs are boring and they, and they don't have a built-in validity, a built-in validity to them at all. There's no validations factor at all except maybe a scientific equation, which is also boring to me. So you, you heard this concept of mind over matter, right? You've heard people talk about mind over matter. Well, the way, that I, the way that I would say it, I would just use slightly different language. I would say that the, the mind is extraordinarily powerful um, in ways that people have not even uh, even begun to conceive the level of power that the mind has, the, the capacity of the mind and the capacity of the being. So I would say if you have a limiting belief about something, then you are in fact going to create a limitation that will seem real to you, it will seem absolutely, absolutely real, but the actual, uh, uh, the actual source of it is the belief and the belief in the limitation. Um, like, like, let me give you a concrete example. All of history on planet Earth has been a story of people killing each other because of a belief that the other person is not good and they are good and the other person has to be killed. Uh, and we have you know billions upon billions upon billions of people who over centuries have died or been killed because of a belief, because of nothing more than a belief, okay? So it shows the power of a belief. Like, well, look at the Crusades. What was the Crusades about? It was about two different beliefs. Your, my belief is better than your belief, and you're so bad in your belief that I have to kill you. I have to kill you to prove that I'm right in my belief and you're wrong in your belief. Now, if that's not... The de definition of insanity to me, I don't know what it is. Seems like the best version of insanity that I've ever been able to find. It's, in, it, it's, in, it's insane. What you just said is really insane. It's something I think about all the time, how stupid we are as humans to still. I know, but what but I want to impress upon you is that is that 99.999% of all of the different disparities and conflicts and confusion and disorientation, uh, a gobbledygook that goes on in our society is still the same thing. It's a function of beliefs of one group of people who have one belief, another have another one, and they each think that the other one's wrong and that they're right. And so our whole entire society could be summed up, can all be summed up as playing one game one single game. You want to know what that game is? The game is the right wrong. It's called the right wrong game. Bless you. It's the right wrong game. I'm right, you're wrong. That's the game. Whole of humanity has been based on the right wrong game. It's a boring game. It's a game that's been beaten to death for thousands upon thousands of years, and it's very boring. And there's no winner to that game. And so what we're witnessing now on planet Earth is the winding down, the winding down of this right wrong game and the emergence of a co-create game, a game of creating together. That is the new game on planet earth, to create together. And what's dying is the right wrong game. That's the game that's dying out. So that's the key evolution of mankind. That is where we are ev evolving on planet Earth. Sums it all up right there. I gotta say, Howard, I've really, I've really enjoyed this so far. But I, I think, I, I think that everything that you've talked about just isn't for most people. I don't think most people have. I agree. No, I agree. I agree 100% with you. 
100% correct. It's only for a small, it's only for a small percentage of the people that can grok, that can grok what I'm saying and resonate with it and want it. I agree totally. So would you would you say that the the most important thing for somebody in their business is their own mindset? Uh, their, their, I would say their mindset and their and their desire. I would also say their desire level because you know I think there's a lot to be said for the level of desire that a person has. You know when you when you have a strong desire for something, whatever that thing may be, that's a motivator. You know that's a pretty strong motivator, right? For sure. And when you have a strong motivation for something, you're going to probably go through this, whatever the steps are that you need to go through in order to get it. You're motivated, right? Sure. So I think desire and motivation are big factors too. They're big factors. So I want to be able to have you just dump some whatever value that you not that what you've done so far isn't valuable to me, insanely valuable to me, but I want to give you a chance to just blurt out whatever value you can to, to people and then get into your offers. So I want to make sure you have enough time. So uh, are you limited for time or can I ask you a few more questions? No, no, I'm complete. I'm completely fine. I would say, I would say that if you're listening to this, to this um, or watching this video, uh, I would say to, you know, ask yourself the question, are you living the optimum life that you really want for yourself? If the answer is yes, then keep on doing it and keep on exp experiencing joy every day and share, share your gifts with others and have fun doing it. If on the other hand, you're feeling that, that there's something missing for you and you may not, you're not sure necessarily what that something is that's missing, but you have a feeling that there's something missing I would say get in touch with us and interact with me or my team and learn what's possible in life where we will help you identify whatever that missing piece is, see how you can identify it and get it and find it, okay? So that's what I would say. And there, I do have several offers I can, I can share that's okay with you. Oh, for sure, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a chance to so at the end, I'm trying to go the over first, the first um, the first offer I would say is my uh, what's called the discovery session, and that's a no cost complimentary one to one conversation that you can have with me, but it's restricted. The only people I will do that with are people who are serious minded individuals who are really looking to wanting a mentor, a guide, or a coach. In other words, somebody, they're serious about working with somebody, a teacher, or somebody like myself. So it's worth our time, you know, to meet and explore a real partnership together. If you are in that category and you are sincere and serious in that way, then I would say, uh, by all means, go and schedule that. And you could go to Life Crafting Program dot com that's lifecraftingprogram.com and in the upper right corner you'll see a link to schedule the discovery session or you can also go down on the page and you'll see a link below that will take you to the uh yeah lifecraftingprogram.com and you know when you get there you'll see he's bringing this up on the screen in the upper right corner See, I think you're there. Looks like it. No, well, wait until the wait until the page loads. This didn't quite load yet. Okay, just yeah, give it a moment for the page to load. I don't. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't know if you. Why don't you do the HT? Oh, there you are. You're there. Okay, discovery session. Click on that, and you can go ahead and schedule it with me. So that's one. Okay. All right. and, and then the second, so that's the best one if you're serious. And of course you can watch the video there that you're seeing on the screen. You can always watch that video, which is a great one minute. It's a one minute video of me that gives you a good introduction, okay? And this is essentially your free offer, right? This is not for everybody, but it is a free offer. 
Yeah, it's not for everybody, but it is a free offer. Yeah. Actually, all my offers are free, but they're for different groups of people. So you, uh, I mean, the second, the second uh, offer that would be our monthly webinar, our monthly webinar. And uh, you'll see there that little gold button. To, oh, actually, that may not be working, but try it now. See if the, see if it's working. It may be working. Yeah, there you go. So this is our upcoming webinar that we're doing December the 3rd. And the topic is the ultimate empowerment system. It's really quite extraordinary. So you can go to this page and then you can um, register. And it's free, of course, it's free. But I can tell you that if you come to this webinar and you interact with me, you're not going to be the same anymore. <laughs> we do some serious stuff and we do some very serious, serious shifting with people. So a lot, a lot will happen here. So this is another really great option. It's completely free and we encourage you to come and join us. We have a phenomenal community and amazing people. Uh, now go back, uh, click your back button for a moment there. Ask your question real quick. Just... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You said all your offers are free. Like everything that you offer is free. How do I give you money? No, no, no. These are all introductory offers. These are all beginning or beginning introductory offers. Once once you progress beyond the that initial level of all our free things, once you progress, then you get into our paid you get into our paid programs. Okay, so you now, if you, if you click on the right button, the right gold button there then that's the book, click there, and then you'll see the book page. Just let it, let it, let it load there. Yeah, and you'll see this is my book. Now the book, see the book is normally $25 on Amazon, but you don't want that because this one's only $9 and it's gonna plug you into our community. This is the PDF downloadable version of the book, which is infinitely superior so this is the page you want to go to to get the book. And then you'll automatically be offered the option of joining our community. So, and, and I can't even, this, I, I, there's so many benefits to being in our community. I won't even, it, it just, it's, it's a phenomenal thing. It's all free and it's, it, you'll get amazing benefits from that. But the plus, you'll be able to keep, plus you'll be able to keep coming to our webinars every month and keep learning uh, more and more on our webinars and then more and more interacting with me personally. So we build a, you know, we build a nice rapport and a nice relationship with each other and all the goodies, all the goodies that come from that. But this is, this is what I made. This book is a byproduct of 30 plus years of, 30 plus years of research and, and knowledge and teaching and mentoring and coaching and study so it's 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 a pretty hefty thing you know to have all the access to that and all the exercises that go with that and it's all part of the the whole deal so very good uh, good option the, the book's nine dollars right yeah the book yeah the book is uh eight it's 8.99 if you purchase it here with this button that you see in front of you yeah it's nine dollars basically so do you have some type of continuity offer, like some type of monthly residual plan that people pay you monthly for? Yeah, we do. Um, actually, um, when people come to the stage of, uh, like when they, when they get to the stage of, uh, of our, one of our paid programs, and we have several uh, actual paid programs, um, when you get to that stage with us, then we do offer payment, payment plans. So you can do you know, different options, uh, obviously not for $9, but you know what I mean? Like when you're further along, we do have various payment plans that we, we offer to make it affordable for people, make it easy, easy and affordable for people. Also, life crafting itself, I will say is a very much of a stair step. I call it a stair step process, like a learning, you know what I mean? Stair step, you start it where you're at, and then you progress at your own pace. So no one tells you how fast, how fast you need to go. You can go slow or medium or fast. You can go whatever pace you want to.
and that you're always going to be in our community and you'll always get support regardless you know what your pacing is so that's another adva advantage to it well i know you said that there's a payment plan but what i'm trying to get at is do you have a continuity offer do you have something that people are on a monthly subscription and they just pay every month until they decide to cancel or until they die we have we have something like that uh like you're describing we have something very much like that but unfortunately it's not something i can just I can just share like here now in our in our interview because people need to go for a little further along in understanding and understanding what we have before we can reach that uh, uh, that monthly uh, subscription thing. So what I would say is if, if you are in this camp where you want to do some kind of a monthly program, uh, just go through the initial uh, free steps. So we can get to a point where you have your foundations and then we're talking and then we'll, we'll be there, you know, then we'll be there and we can discuss that. That would be the best way to do it. So do you have a high ticket offer? Do you have some high ticket offer? Yeah, we have, yes, we have, we have a couple of, we have a couple of high, high priced uh, programs for serious high level, uh, you know, for the serious high level person who's wanting a total you know, a total complete commitment partnership type type deal. Yeah, we do have some some of those as well. Absolutely. It's a very much, as I said, a stair step progression up. And I pride myself on the fact that no matter where somebody is starting from, there's going to be a place for them to begin. That's what I really love about the way we've structured it. So could you just tell me a little bit about the ultimate empowerment system and what that is? Yes, I'd love to. Um, uh, let me start from let me start from um, from the, the the problem, and then we can talk about the solution. Because sometimes, if you talk about a solution but you don't know what the problem is, it it kind of it can be confusing. So uh, here, the way I'll explain it is this way: many people lack focus in their life. They lack alignment to their purpose, and they lack focus. They don't, they're not particularly good with follow through and they have scattered energy. These are symptoms that I think a lot of people have in their life, you know, just being scattered and not focused. Then we have another uh, symptom of people who are very isolated. They're kind of alone and isolated and they miss critical feedback. You know how important feedback is in life, having important people in your life that you can bounce things off of and get opinions and stuff. A lot of people are so isolated that they lack feedback and they lack guidance in important areas. So that's the second grouping. A third grouping is accountability. Uh, you probably know that accountability in life is important. What I mean by that is it's important to be able to make promises and keep make and keep your promises whether you're making promises to yourself or you're making promises to others, you need to be able to keep make and keep your promises because that's going to build integrity and power and strength and confidence. So these are three really good examples of the kind of breakdowns that people often have in life and they pay a price for it. There's a price, there's a cost. The cost could be limited accomplishment, limited income, limited satisfaction, limited partnerships, limited confidence level or self-esteem. These are examples, okay? So what we've devised is this ultimate empowerment system, and we're going to teach it. I'm going to teach the whole uh, system on December the 3rd at our webinar. I'm going to teach the entire ultimate empowerment system. And what it is, it's a system that eliminates all of these breakdowns that I just described, you know, like I went through just some examples. It gives you a system that will eliminate all those breakdowns. Boom, gone. Just one system. If you use the system, you understand it, how it works, boom, uh, it eliminates those issues. So that's the exciting thing we're doing on December the 3rd where we're going to, I'm going to teach that and it'll be recorded. So if somebody uh, 
comes, they, they can't do it live. They can come to the recording or they can, you know, come live. Now, the advantage is if they come to the webinar live, then they're going to get personal coaching. So they're going to be able to step forward and say, my problem is blah, 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 blah. And then I will guide them with their very specific issue that they're going through. But it's still going to be all related to the, to the ultimate empowerment system because that's our theme. And I want people to really learn to learn that and see that. Now, I could share if you want, John, I could share a couple of comments that some of our, our clients have made about this. Would you like that? I could share some of what they've said about this. For sure, but that, that webinar is free to attend, right? The webinar is free. The, the webinar is free, exactly. Wow. What I could share, though, is I could share what some of our, what some of our participants have, the benefits that they've gained from using the ultimate empowerment system. So if you want, I could just share some of that. You what? I would love that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so one woman, uh, one woman, her name's Neetu, she said that I've become passionate to pursue my goals and I'm now building momentum knowing that I'm gonna receive feedback on my blind spots because beforehand she didn't see or know her blind spots so she didn't get feedback on them. So she was always tentative or hesitant. So this is like a total game changer. Then there was a man named Jeff who said that he's now calmer and more confident of realizing his goals. He feels much less inner resistance once he decides to do something. He, he's 100% committed and able to follow through when getting, getting the results. So there's a couple of of great examples of what people have said about it. Can you do that for free? You help people like that for free? Why do you do that? No, yeah, well, yes, yes. Think of it this way. Um, think of it this way. I can give you a, a tool or a system or a method, okay? And it's free. I can, you know, I can teach it to you and give it to you, right? Then it's up to you to decide if you want to go off and just use it on your own. And if you do, you're, you're done, you're home free, just go and use it. But some people feel once they've been given a tool or a method, they want to continue getting more guidance and they want to engage with, with a team and a group and they want to get further, you know, further teaching and guide, et cetera. Then there's a cost, of course, to participate in that, but it's not required. You know, once you learn it, it's up to you. You can just Go off and do it on do it yourself. You don't need to pay anything if you don't want to. But you know, there's benefit in going further, and you know, elect in all cases, you know, having a mentor and a teacher uh, that you can work with. You know, so anybody that's not that's required. Anybody that's interested in that, that they would go to that monthly webinar and sign up for that monthly webinar to get into that. Yeah, yeah. The, basically, when, once they go to the first one, like if they go to the December 3rd one, our, our, our system will, will put a tag, will give them this tag, and the tag will allow them to continue uh, uh, attending all future months at no cost. So they can keep coming back, you know, and attending, and there's never, will never be a cost. They can just keep coming back. Seems like you give a lot of value out for free. So. I do. I do give a lot of value for free. And then the reason I do that is because I have one, one, I just, I love sharing and giving and I, I love the enjoyment of that, but also because I know that the value is so great of what we offer that, you know, there's always going to be people who come forward and want to, want to sign up for our paid programs. So, I mean, I, I feel confident that way. So is there, is there any value that you would like to provide for free right now to, to these people? Is there anything that you could like- what I, shared early, what, I, what I shared earlier, I think is the primary value. What I, what I said earlier, I gave a little tip about where, you know, where your choices are. Like if you, you know, that's I think the most important value right now. And, and, and I will say in closing, I could wrap up and say, you, you have, a potential far greater than what you've ever believed you have. 
And if you open your mind and your heart to discovering what that is, what that greater something is, you will be astounded at what is possible if you open yourself up. So don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for just sort of mediocre okay. There's so much more that's possible and we, we can create it together. So that's my final, say my final uh, offering, I'd say. Well, this has been awesome, Howard. I really want to thank you again. I loved it. I had a lot of fun. This was great. This, is, this was awesome. I, I want to thank you again. I want everybody here on Facebook and everybody that watches us to know that um, there's lots of different ways that you can go and get into Howard's world. So I'm just going to go ahead and end this live video real quick on Facebook. So see you guys. Let me